Time now for French Connections, our weekly look at the intricacies of French life with our very own Florence Villemanau. Hi, Flo. Hi, Jeannie. Now, we've already explored France's reputation of being a country that's always on strike, but this week you're going to focus on France's trade unions and just how powerful they are. That's right. They certainly have the reputation of being very powerful French trade unions. How many of them are there? Well, there are five official trade unions in France recognized as state uh, negotiating partners, essentially. Let's take a look at them. You have, first of all, the CGT. That's one of the biggest ones. That's the General Confederation of Labor. Once close to the Communist Party, it's traditional taken the most militant positions on political and industrial issues. You also have the CFDT. That's another big one, uh, generally seen as being more reformist, willing to compromise with the government. And then you have the other uh, big three. Now, the differences between these trade unions can be hard to decipher at times, but there's considerable rivalry amongst them because remember they're competing for membership and therefore negotiating power. Now you talk about membership but what's so interesting is that the number of French workers who are actually paid up union members is one of the weakest in Europe. That's right. The statistics are really surprising. France is actually one of the lowest rates of union membership in the OECD. Let's take a look. Less than 8% of employees are union card uh, hold, holding members. The figure is lower, you can see, than the UK, where it's 26%, lower than Germany, where it's 18%, and even the United States, uh, where it's 11%. Now, French trade unionism is heavily concentrated in the public sector, roughly 15%. Uh, and you can see that the right rate hovers right around 5% in the private sector. Now, keep in mind, though, that uh, France's public sector is very big. About uh, 5.6 million people work in the public sector, so uh, that's about 20% of the working force. So 15% of that is still quite a lot of people. So I still don't understand how French unions can be so powerful if their membership is so low. Well, the real source of union strength comes from their bargaining power uh, at the macro level Trade unions are a key partner in something called the dialogue social, and that is, in fact, our word of the day. It's a very French thing. What is it? Well, uh, quite literally, dialogue social means social dialogue, but essentially it's collective bargaining. Anytime the government wants to carry out an economic or a social reform, it has to consult and negotiate with trade unions and business representatives. The idea is to promote social cohesion and essentially keep the peace between workers and employers. Now, every year there's this big uh, social conference, it's called, uh, in France. You can see it taking place behind me here. Essentially, the government meets up with business representatives and trade unions and they discuss big issues. And, and this kind of collective bargaining happens at the national level. It also happens at the industry and the company level. And Results can be a little testy. In fact, some people say that today it's not really getting anywhere. Let's take a, a listen to a, a, a Secretary General of the CFDT. The main problem with the so-called social dialogue today are the actors involved. On the one hand, there are those who believe that negotiating with business representatives is a betrayal. On the other, you have those who believe that any negotiation with workers is a waste of time and counterproductive for the economy. I believe there's a middle ground, that is to talk to one another and debate ideas. When it comes to unions on a national level, but on a micro level, trade unions are also very powerful in the way companies work themselves, whether they're public or private. That's right. Now, by law, in firms over 50 staff members, all employees, whether or not they're part of a union, are represented by an elected union delegate. They're kind of like class reps. Uh, they sit on work councils and separate health and safety councils. And essentially, these unions, these representatives, have to be consulted by bosses on a daily basis. Now, this can be about big things like contracts and paid vacations, but it also can be about more trivial things like rearranging the furniture. They have to double check with the unions, first of all. Now, as you can imagine, these work council relations can lead to some mixed results. Let's listen to one person's opinion. I can't forecast the state of social relations. Relations between business and unions are complicated and they're deteriorating. That's true for the public and private sector, but it's not true everywhere. Critics say that this whole process tends to be counterproductive, and indeed there have been studies that show that French firms choose not to hire more than 49 p people, essentially to not have to deal with these kind of work councils. But that being said, in France there's still a long tradition of public sympathy for trade unions, even if membership is very low. This kind of goes hand in hand with a certain 
mistrust of a certain part of the population for businesses and business representatives. So what's the future of trade unions? Will they continue to be so powerful? Well, legislation passed under uh, President Nicolas Sarkozy actually has required a minimum service, a minimum level of service uh, in public transport, schools and nurseries during strikes, which has kind of reduced the bark of certain big unions. But on top of that, there have been growing divisions within trade unions, which has also affected their bark and their bite. Uh, it means that they've actually failed to draw spectacular numbers of people to the streets like they used to. For instance, their traditional May Day rally, which is held on May 1st, Labor Day, traditionally, it, it used to draw crowds, huge crowds of people. And these di days, there are fewer and fewer people showing up. In fact, there's kind of a running joke. Anytime there's a big a demonstration that's organized by uh, unions, they tend to kind of inflate the number of people on the streets, sometimes three times, sometimes 10 times as many as the official figures from uh, the police say. So uh, according to this, you can, you can see that their power might be waning a little bit, but they still have that very important bargaining power at the macro and the micro level. And for now, that's not going anywhere. All right, Florence Vilmona, thank you for that. A look at, at trade unions, a very integral part of life here in France, one of many. And if you have any questions about France or the French that you would like us to explore in French Connections, you can always tweet Flo at Flo Vilmano. Don't forget also to check out our website.